when you buy the phone, fresh new, they have great color, same white, but as they age, the uh, screens age slightly differently. They are from different sources, different manufacturers. So we wanted to ensure uh, the consistent uh, screen experience throughout the usage. So LG is mixing it up this year with a little bit of a different product launch lineup, I guess you could call it. I've got Kyle Yoon, who is the product manager at LG. We were just discussing how normally for from year to year, LG releases a V series and a G series in the first half of the year, and then a V series in the later half of the year. But this year is a little bit different because the G and V were in the first half of the year, and now we're in the second half and we're releasing a refresh of the G series with the G8X. That's so at Mobile World Congress, we saw a very strong showing from LG with the G8. But now, at IFA, the G8X has been released. Tell us a little bit about that. So the biggest difference uh, between the G8 and G8X is that G8X now comes with LG dual screen. So uh, at the MWC this year, uh, earlier this year, uh, we announced uh, V50, uh, the first 5G phone from LG. And that's the device that came with dual screen. So. Um, in the beginning, we, we decided that dual screen is what's going to differentiate LG's 5G devices. And we have already um, commercialized uh, V50, the 5G phone, in Korea and in more markets. And uh, we have had uh, a, a lot of success with LG dual screen, especially in Korea. So for the second half and for the uh, wider demographic, uh, we decided to um, launch a 4G device uh, with dual screen, and that's uh, the G8X. Thank you, together with LG dual screen. So, what is what went into the product design of a dual screen? So, the, in the previous version uh, that we already had have uh, sported a 6.2 inch on the dual screen, and on the phone it was a 6.4 inch. So this year we. Um, we collected a lot of uh, voices from our consumers. They said, we want bigger. Yeah, bigger, uh, but one that matches on the left and right. So on the phone, it's a 6.4 inch, and also on the dual screen, it's a 6.4 inch. And they are of the same size, same resolution, same aspect ratio, and also, uh, more importantly, uh, same color profile. So. Um, we do notice there's a notch on the dual screen, even though there is not a camera there. So this uh, was one of the harder decisions for uh, us product managers to make. For aesthetic reasons to match? Well, no, not aesthetics. Oh. When you buy the phone, fresh new, they have great colors, same white. But as they age, they, uh, screens age slightly differently. They are from different sources, different manufacturers. Oh. So we wanted to ensure uh, the consistent uh, screen experience throughout the usage. And the notch actually feeds into that? Yeah, we wanted to use the same screen that we use on the phone. I see. The exact same screen on the phone and the dual screen. That's why uh, there is the, uh, the notch in the dual screen design. What consumer feedback were you getting to, to facilitate kind of like a dual screen versus what we've seen from other companies wanting the roll-up screen or an additional screen? This is an, a separate screen. There are quite a few things why we came up with this idea. Um, well, it, the journey begins with uh, the consumer study of what they do with their phone. Uh, you, for example, I don't need to persuade you that you multitask on your phone. You, you make your phone call, you send messages, take, take photos, delete photos, share photos, edit photos. And do your work. And do your work, <laughs> all these things. But you're doing all of that in a single screen phone. You use your laptop, right? Yeah. And at home or at your office, you have a monitor yeah. that you connect to it, yeah. and that doubles up your productivity. Absolutely. And you can surf the bit, surf the web better. You can buy things better because you're comparing the two. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the inherent need that was there that we only drew out and made into this form factor because now. Um, some manufacturers take a stab at it by connecting the phone to your monitor or your laptop. But we, we believe everything will be done on the mobile from uh, the beginning to the end. And it's more and more coming so. So 
uh, we want to transfer that experience into this form factor, to the mobile. And what about this idea, um, we talked about the rollout screen that right. many manufacturers have come out with. Is that something, a direction that LG um, is pursuing? Uh, we are testing uh, the foldables and also other form factors. You've uh, seen uh, the, the display technology that we have as, as LG Electronics. Mm -hmm. um, the TV guys decided to go ahead with it. Right. Um, but what we thought is important with mobile device is the mobility. So we have in the lab um, like other form factors and we just could not get them light enough to carry in your pocket. Uh, for, for some people who carry the phones in their pocket like me. Yeah. Uh, so in Korea, um, about 30% of the people um, uh, constantly have the phone attached to their dual screen, but about 62% of people only carry the phone with them on the go because um, for people like me who carry the phone in their uh, pockets, we can't carry the thickness or that weight constantly, especially when I'm wearing shorts in, in, in hot summer, I can imagine in California also, and can't run with this thing in the pocket. So being detachable uh, gives you the flexibility. Uh, if you like to carry a bag around with you, then it's okay. It's not too much of a problem. So we give users the, the flexibility, detachability, uh, which you already have experience with via laptop and monitor. What about the improved navigation? The browser is quite different than G8X. Right. I don't know if you, when you browse, uh, I do this a lot. I uh, click hold of control and click like multiple articles for uh -huh. me to read. Um, so that kind of experience is also possible with this form factor. So on the, on the phone, when you have a web browser, uh, you have a list of all the articles. And when you click them, they launch on the dual screen and not on the phone. So you're still in the context uh, of that uh, search or, or shopping, and you can look at the details of what you uh, searched for or clicked on. And the audio in this is quite remarkable as well. So um, two things we are very proud of with LG Premium smartphones are camera and audio. So we have had 32 Hi-Fi Quad DAC uh, uh, independent chipset inside the phone uh, because there is a DAC inside the Qualcomm uh, application processor, but there's a lot of um, high frequency noise, as you can imagine, on the, on the ground. Um, we have a different uh, chipset, uh, completely differential when, uh, when it comes to signal processing, so as to have high SNR to reproduce um, the original recording as, as clean as possible and uh, we continue to support the, the headphone jack uh, for people who already bought you know, $200, $300 headphones. We partner with DTS to deliver uh, the virtual surround uh, experience. And what does that experience sound like with DTS? So even though you're um, listening to a, a game or a movie with headphones, uh, the sound is going to, you're gonna feel as though the sound is coming from all, over, all, all around you. Um, personally, I think it's really, um, really, really makes you immerse in the game. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's game more than like movies, yeah. because games now come with huge music, like epic music, like like you, what you can hear in yeah. these trade shows. So you know, it really gets you into the game with the surround sound. So we're talking about gaming, and it seems like every company is going that gaming yeah. technology. Should we expect something that's in addition to the G8X in the future as a gaming phone? Uh, from LG, we want to reach wider demographic with our phones, uh, and there is a huge segment of consumer segment who likes to play games, but a lot of games in the Play Store are more casual mm -hmm. games. Uh, like Brawl Stars is a really popular game in Korea. I don't know about uh, the US or other countries. Um, so we want to deliver this experience where you can really focus on the game itself and not hinder uh, the experience. So when you launch a game here, uh, you get to launch gamepad on the phone. So your thumbs are not covering up the game but playing here and holding it comfortably, a little bit like the Nintendo DS. So even though this is not a gaming phone, it is conducive to a great gaming experience, yeah. especially with the audio, especially with the setup of the controller. Uh, we were very careful uh, in that 
when you play a game and have YouTube playing at the same time, you get the mix of audio from both apps. Some apps, when developers develop those apps, they can uh, announce um, audio focus and say, I'm going to take the audio. Uh, but not all developers do that, uh, and it's their choice. So um, respecting that, we give the users to um, decide whether they want to hear the sound from the game and oh. have the YouTube as like a background, no sound movie, or vice versa. I never really thought about that. If you have dual screen, you also have dual speakers, and you're able to control and customize based on which one you want to hear more of. Right, so you could be on the call with someone really, maybe that you don't want to talk to, <laughs> and then you could just mute them and watch your YouTube videos. And we talked about, so audio and camera are the two important features. With the camera, I know every year more and more sensors are added in. Yes. What is new about the G8X? So at MWC, we announced that we'll, um, uh, the practical innovation is the philosophy uh, behind LG Premium Smartphones. So we don't have gazillion features in our camera, uh, but only focus on features that will, uh, consumers will, will actually use and appreciate. From the product manager's point of view, I, I, I want this device uh, to be used by uh, more and more people as a package. So we make choices between how many cameras we're going to have, what sensors we're going to use, uh, how about the added cost of this extra display. So we, when we look at the camera, it's the telephoto lens that people use the least. Um, so, I mean, if you have a, a, a phone from a competitor with two or three lenses, maybe I can show you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you mind opening your camera application? So this is your uh, standard lens, mm -hmm. and how do you go to your telephoto? Telephoto is... So this is the standard angle. I'm going to cover up the lens, which is this one, and I'm going to change to telephoto and it's still blocking. I'm not blocking the telephoto. I'm only blocking the standard angle. And see, that's the standard angle. And I'm going to telephoto. You see, you're not actually using this lens. Oh, then what, how does that work then? Um, so telephoto has, uh, so manufacturers put a really good sensor behind the standard angle camera. Uh -huh. That's what consumers use the most. So the result of standard angle camera with digital zoom versus telephoto, the, the prior is usually better. So we are in this race of adding lenses, the wide angle, the, the standard angle, the telephoto, the depth, the macro. Some actually have uh, value, some less. So we decided to go with standard angle, uh, but put in the best sensor we can okay. to ensure the zoom in picture quality to be, you know, uh, just as good as uh, phones with more cameras. Got it. Okay, so you've got two cameras on the back. Yes. And there's one on the front. So the reason you get good picture quality from your rear camera, whether it's from us or whether it's from another manufacturer, is that manufacturers usually put in what we call the big pixel sensor uh, behind cameras in the rear camera. The larger uh, pixel sensor you have, uh, more light you can get, which translates to faster shutter speed, less ISO you can use, less noise, and, and all of that. What I want to say at the end of the day is that we now have that good a sensor behind the selfie camera. Uh, first in the industry, I, I think, I haven't checked everything, but most uh, major manufacturers put in a sensor that is um, uh, less good than the rear camera. And it's a reason because consumers are asking for a better selfie camera? Consumers are taking more and more photos, and now they're taking videos, a lot of videos with the selfie camera. So the importance of selfie camera for some consumers actually exceeds the importance of the rear camera. What about the biometrics of, of the front-facing camera? We know that a lot of times it's used to unlock your phone. Is there another pathway for, for biometrics? For now, uh, I think it's safe to say we'll stick with uh, in-display fingerprint sensor for the uh, next few uh, devices. Um, but we have launched a G8 with face recognition, the okay. 3D face recognition. And we are still uh, in the research of putting that here on the phone without um, uh, using up too much of the screen. 
very interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Kyle. And for all of you viewers at home, I challenge you to think about this a little bit because whenever a new mobile phone comes onto the market, the first thing we all tend to do is criticize the things that it doesn't have, the things that it took away. But if you could design your dream phone with some of these parameters in mind, what are some of the features that are important to you? Would you rather have a bigger screen? Would you rather have a thinner phone? Would you rather have dual screens? Would you rather have this or this or that and that? I think if you think about these features in that way, then you will be able to look at these products in a whole new, from a whole new perspective of appreciation, which is why I'm really appreciating this phone right now. Right. Thank you so much again. We're gonna be covering of doing some hands-on with the phones later on, but LG every year seems to come out with something that's just a little different than the rest, and but makes so much consumer sense in the end.